Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a webinar this morning. It'll be on Transform Your Product Development with SOLIDWORKS Cloud Solutions. This will be presented by Mark Barrow. If you have any issues with uh, the audio or the screen, then please put it in the message comments and we'll see if we can help. But otherwise, I'll hand it over to Mark and he'll take you through the webinar. Enjoy. Thanks, Joe. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for taking the time out to join today's webinar. My name is Mark Barrow, and I'm a 3D experience specialist at uh, Dassault Systems SOLIDWORKS. And today we're going to take a look at some really exciting new cloud solutions from SOLIDWORKS that can totally transform your product development process. And as Joe said, if during the webinar you have any questions, and I'm sure many of you will as we go through it, you can type them in the questions area in the GoToWebinar control panel. And if you have any issues with the audio or any issues with seeing the screen, just raise your hand in the control panel. One of my colleagues will help you to get sorted. So before we get into the technology this morning, I'm going to start with the topic of collaboration. How do product development teams collaborate today? And what I'd like to do first of all is just run a quick poll to ask you, the audience, what's your primary method of collaboration when working on a design project? Okay, looks like pretty much everybody's voted. So thank you for, for everybody that's added your response. We'll share the uh, share the response. So yeah, it's as, as, yeah, it's pretty typical amongst uh, product development companies, design and manufacturing companies, and and uh, you know all of us really many many different industries. You know, email is pretty pretty common, face to face meetings, and that's you know pretty typical uh, of what we see. And I'm I'm sure you know most of you are using uh, a combination uh, of all of those methods as well. And there can be a huge amount of information to manage on on even the smallest of design projects. You know, we, you have project plans, you've got CAD data, documents, requirements, and the, and the list pretty much goes on and on, doesn't it? And the result is we often spend a huge chunk of time sat in meetings, getting bombarded with emails, working with disconnected processes and software products. And, and long gone are the days where most of us you know, spend five days a week working at our desk, eight hours a day. You know, we're often traveling to meet with customers, suppliers, meaning that you know we need easy access to product project information when out the office and of course now with the current global situation the majority of us are having to work to this new adapt to this new world of working remotely with everyone for the foreseeable future and with any product development project we absolutely have to be in control of what we're sharing and with who and we also want to make sure that how we share the content is secure and simple and built right into our our day-to-day -day processes so that's how we typically do things today and the challenges it can pose, and we're pretty familiar with those. So what about doing things differently with the 3D Experience platform? Now, the 3D Experience platform helps solve these challenges faced by product development companies by providing one single collaborative cloud-based environment connecting all project stakeholders, ideas, design data, and solutions. And using the 3D Experience platform, you and your design teams can quickly and easily create, review, and evaluate 3D conceptual and detailed models. And with the 3D Experience platform being cloud-based, that means you can do all of this on any device, whether you're in the office or working remotely, which, of course, as I just mentioned, many of us are now having to do. All you need is an internet connection, and you can log in to work in your design project wherever you are. So it's really simple to get in and get going. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the solution in a bit more detail. So I'm going to follow the story of a product development team who are leveraging the power of the 3D experience platform on a project to design a new monitor stand for a client. So let's get to know the team members a little better. So we've got Pete, the project manager, and just like many of you on the webinar today, he wears multiple hats while trying to stay focused on pulling together resources to get the job done. We've got Debbie, she's a typical mechanical engineer. She's a mechanical engineer of a team responsible for developing the detailed designs. And like Pete, she's often out visiting customers and needs to have access to the project information outside of the office. Don's the industrial designer with an extra amount of creativity and responsible for developing the more complex organic shapes. And then finally, Adam, what team is complete without a simulation engineer? Adam uses the most current analysis tools out there to help the team validate the designs as they get developed. So the team are going to start on a brand new project to redesign parts of an existing monitor stand 
on behalf of one of their clients. So we're going to start with Pete. So Pete's responsibility is to share the design brief with the team and plan the project and assign the relevant tasks to the team members. So it all starts uh, with Pete. So he starts his Friday morning by logging into the 3D Experience platform via his web browser. And this takes Pete straight into his dashboard. The dashboard allows Pete to monitor what's most important to him so he can get his job done. And the dashboard provides Pete with some powerful productivity tools that enable him to keep track of design project information, or in fact, any information he chooses to display related to his day-to-day -day work. For example, websites that he might access on a daily basis, capturing meeting notes and viewing designs. So as you can see, Pete's gone ahead here and opened the existing monitor stand design supplied by his client. Pete can easily explore the design, make decisions about what modifications are required, just using his web browser without having to open the design in any CAD software. So Pete isn't just limited to viewing the design related content. Moving to his market research tab, Pete has used some of the business analytics tools to track industry news related to the current project. So Pete's tab essentially becomes a live news feed within his dashboard. And then one other tab on his dashboard is dedicated to a collaborative design community where he can keep track of his team's progress as they start work on the monitor stand project. So this is where Don, Debbie and Adam collaborate on the progress of their designs. With information displayed in the series of posts, it's a little bit like Facebook or LinkedIn for design projects. So Don's posted his ideas for the new base cover design. So next, Pete goes ahead and adds his thoughts to the conversation thread. And at the same time, Don and the rest of the team will get notifications that the post has been updated, keeping them informed without having to rely on Pete sending time consuming emails. So Pete's happy for Don to start working on developing the concept design further and moves Don design idea to the concept stage. So communities are a powerful way of capturing the evolution of any design project, providing Pete and his team with a complete history of the decision making process as their designs develop. So next, Pete's going to go to his projects tab and create a new project focusing on the redesign of the arm mounting bracket and the cover for the stand's base. So adding images, title and description to the project, allow it to stand out from the collection of other projects Pete might be working on. And the projects themselves are broken up by summary, tasks, schedule, members and content. So what Pete's going to do first is add the members of the project, Debbie, Don and Adam. And then once the three members have been added, he'll move over to the schedule and begin by adding a milestone. So Pete's a fan of working backwards from the goal. So for this project, the goal is to share the final monitor stand design with the customer. So once the date is set, which in this case is going to be fixed, he's now ready to go ahead and create all of the tasks needed to reach it. So he's going to start by adding a new task for Debbie. So Debbie's going to be redesigning the, uh, the mounting arm bracket on the stand. So he goes ahead and creates a task. You can zoom in to the, uh, the, the plan view showing the, uh, the milestone and the task as it is now. And then what he's going to do next is add Debbie to the task. So you can see you can pick from the list of team members. And then next, what's really important here, he can attach the design data that's been supplied by, by the client to the task. So just by attaching the monitor stand assembly, then that ensures that when Debbie access is a task and you'll see that a little bit later she's got all of the design data or documentation that she needs to work on that task straight away so just fast forward forwarding a few minutes pete's gone ahead and created the rest of those tasks for the project and he can easily add dependencies between those tasks just by dragging them and dropping so that some tasks you know don't start until the ones before it have been completed so it's a nice and easy way of just building up a project, getting the tasks in there, and then just dragging out and adjusting the schedule as he sees fit. So that's Pete starting the project, collaborating with some of his design team within the community. So looking at the client's data, getting feedback from the team, building the project plan. So next, the rest of the team need to start going ahead and doing some design work. So we're going to start with Debbie, the mechanical engineer. And just like Pete, what she's going to do, she's going to come in and log in to her dashboard 
just using a web browser. And straight away we're on her dashboard, she's looking at her tasks tab. So she can see all of the tasks that have been assigned to her by Pete. And she's going to start off that new mounting bracket design redesign task. So she can just literally drag that from to do to in progress. And of course that will update the actual project plan. So if Pete's monitoring the plan at any time, he can now see that that task from Debbie is now in progress. So Debbie's going to do a, go ahead and do some design work. She's going to use the X Design app in 3D, 3D Creator to create a new mounting arm bracket for the monitor stand. So working totally just within her web browser, she's now got access to actually creating geometry, starting a brand new design. So she's starting with the core part of the, the central part of the bracket there. So just using a sketch based approach, sketching out the profiles, building in some symmetry and building in the whole shape so she can just choose which contours to extrude to create the geometry. So it's a really quick and easy way to go ahead and, and start building up the design. Once she's got the geometry, she can start adding other, other detail type features like fillets, chamfers, you know, different, uh, different whole types, adding draft, for example. So she carries on building up the design. She's building some symmetry by mirroring uh, the mounting points on the bracket. And then next, what she's going to do is create a revolved feature for the collar part where it's going to sit uh, within the, uh, the main uh, shaft of the stand. So we have this concept of what we call super features in, in X Design. So here, rather than having to choose to do a revolve straight away, you can literally just select the contour and then later on choose what type of feature it's going to be, whether it's going to be an extrude, a cut, a sweep, a revolve. So you don't have to choose in advance. There's a lot of flexibility when you know creating geometry so you just want the tools that are, are easy and quick and you don't really have to think about too much as you're working so with that you know base design complete next what she's going to do is swap out the original mounting bracket that the uh, the customer supplied with her new design and that's just a simple case of replacing the part and just reattaching the uh, the mates that were there already so rather than having to delete everything and start again so you can see her geometry is a little bit uh, a little bit bigger than the original design. So she's going to make some adjustments to some of the other parts. So just working in context of the assembly here, then she's just going to make a change to the actual arm to add a bit more clearance for that new bracket design. And you can see even that we've just replaced the part, we can simulate any of the mates, you know, and check maybe for clearance or clash as we're moving, moving some of those parts. So you can simulate, she can check the full, full range of movement of the stand. So being able to kind of validate the design as she's working. So with the design complete, what she needs to do next is add the finished design to the task because Pete's going to want to review the designs later on when we get towards the end of the project. So she's going to open up the task back in her tasks tab and actually attach her brand new bracket design to the deliverable section of the task. So that ensures that when Pete later on goes and looks at the project plan, looks at this particular task, he's got everything he needs to review it. So it just makes it so easy to uh, kind of transfer information around the team as you're you know, developing a product together. So that's Debbie completing her design task using uh, X Design. So next, we're going to move over to Don. So Don's been tasked with creating the cover for the base. So this is going to be a much more organic shape. So this time Don's going to be using X shape in 3D Sculptor to create the, uh, the concept for the base cover. So you can see Don's going to just start with just a, you know, a simple, simple shape and actually use the sub D modeling capabilities within X shape to literally just form the part on the screen. So you can literally just push and pull the geometry, it's just like you know, working with a piece of clay essentially on the screen. And of course, you know, just like Debbie, all of this is browser based. So you can be just doing this within a web browser, even on a mobile device. So you can see he's added uh, a crease at the bottom to flatten at the bottom of the base and then just pulling the top down to match to his concept sketch. So it's a really quick and easy way of getting some, you know, really nice stylized design. You know, without you know, the, using the traditional techniques of creating kind of sketches and lofts and sweeps to do this kind of thing. It really is like a virtual clay modeling. 
So, of course, you know, you can create these weird and wonderful shapes and beautiful designs, but you need to manufacture them at the end of the day. So we've got some, you know, manufacturability checking tools like draft analysis, for example. So Don is just going to do a quick draft check and then just pull in some of those edges to avoid some undercuts. So not only can you very quickly create some fantastic designs using these tools, but you can also check that you can make them, which is obviously critical. So now he's checked the manufacturability of that design. What he's going to do is add some more of the detailed design to the shape. So he's going to go ahead and switch back to uh, X Design, which is the uh, gives you gives him access to some of the kind of more kind of detailed modeling capabilities outside of the conceptual tools he was just using. So Don's going to go ahead and start to design the mounting boss that's going in the center. Of course, it needs to be mounted to the, the central part of the stand. So he's going to go ahead and just, you know, just use some, some regular extrudes, some, add some fillets to blend it in uh, to the body. And then finally, it's going to be uh, a molding, of course. So he's going to shell out the design. And, uh, you know, within a matter of minutes, you know, he's, he's gone from his concept sketch to, uh, you know, a pretty, pretty great looking design that uh, potentially we could get 3D printed or even start looking at developing a uh, mold tool for. And then just like Debbie, at the end of that task, he's now happy he's completed the, uh, the, the first version of that base cover. He'd go to his tasks assigned to him by Pete from the project, and just like Debbie, attach the base cover design that he's just been working on to the deliverable section of the task. So again, like Debbie, Pete's going to look at the project plan and see that, that model, and he can review it in the view that, that you saw on his dashboard earlier. So some fantastic browser-based modeling tools to enable you to get designs created really quickly. So a lot of things have been happening between, you know, with Don creating his design, Debbie creating the mountain bracket since Pete initially created the, uh, the project plan. So let's go ahead and just check in with Pete. So Pete's got an overview of the project plan. So at any time he can go to his projects tab, he can see the status of the tasks. So completed tasks in gray. He's going to open up uh, Don's task, his, his base cover task, and Pete can see the deliverable. We can see the model attached in there. And if you wanted to, we could just open that, open that up and view it. We can see that some of the tasks are still in progress, signified by that slightly darker blue on the, uh, the 3D printing task. And of course, he, at any time, Pete can go to the community and see all of the communication going back and forth between the team members. Now, rather than having to kind of trawl for a whole load of emails and attachments you know, like we you know like many of us do today when working on projects or indeed having to go out to a completely different you know software tool to look at different aspects of the project he's got everything he needs to manage the project within his 3d experience dashboard environment so finally with those designs complete pete's happy with the design of course he can he can view the final designs so Pete's, uh, the team members have shared their, their latest versions with, uh, with Pete. And finally, Pete's going to approve the design and release it. So not only can Pete create the project plan and the engineers create the geometry, but as part of the 3D Experience platform, you have the ability to revision control the designs and also move the designs through a formal approval and release process. So you can track the status of the designs at, at any stage of the project. So it's a really powerful way of uh, controlling your product development process. So that brings us to the conclusion of our design story. And as we've seen, Pete and his team were able to collaborate and create a project so as rich with tasks, all while, all while working from the cloud. And since they were using SolidWorks cloud design and lifecycle management tools, they were able to stay informed at all times, re regardless really of what which device they may have been working from. So whether it was their laptop or even if they were out you know, uh, on the move, out with a customer or client, maybe using something like an iPad. So while they were working through the project, they had access to uh, a series of different roles. The team was assigned a, a number of different roles, including many apps. So that enabled them to obviously get different aspects 
of their job done. So Pete was responsible for the overall project plan and the, and the approval of the final design. So he was assigned the project planner and the collaborative industry innovator roles. And in addition to those, Don and Debbie, being designers, were also using the browser-based CAD roles, 3D Creator and 3D Sculptor. And then all of the team were brought together in that one collaborative environment using Business Innovator, which is the foundation of the 3D Experience platform. So in summary, the 3D Experience platform is a fully cloud-based product development solution, which means there's no server to configure and maintain. There's no time-consuming software upgrades to manually deploy, all of which can significantly reduce your IT overheads. All of this provides a secure environment for storing your design data. Design teams can quickly and easily create, review, and evaluate 3D conceptual and detailed models, as you've seen with Pete and his team. And you can do all of this on any device, whether you're in the office or working remotely. And as I mentioned at the beginning, all you need is an internet connection and you can log in and work on your design project basically wherever you are.